Guys, we have to put a stop to HTTP over clear text because it's getting out of control. Security researchers are finding more holes in, in what used to be just a proof of concept few months ago when I reported this. Jake Miller, a lead security researcher, found this vulnerability in, in certain reverse proxies where he was able to bypass all your beautiful load balancer rules. So if you had like a slash admin, hey, if you're going to slash admin and you don't have this rule and you, you're from you're not from this particular source IP address or, or you're not from particular this this subnet, you're not allowed to go. Or, or if you're if you're going this way, this, all these kind of rules that you have put in place in, in your beautiful load balancer, your layer seven load balancer, all of the stuff will be completely bypassed. A major, major security flaw. I'm gonna reference the video if you wanna go there and talk about it. Uh, essentially, they call he called it HTC smuggling or HTTP2 smuggling. Essentially, you can do an HTTP request smuggling using HTTP to over clear text. And you guys, another security researcher, Sean Yo, has taken upon himself to take that proof of concept, which was not really tested against any real production servers like cloud. And he actually took the time to write tooling to prove this concept. He managed to get into Cloudflare using this. Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and other cloud providers. Let's go through how did he manage to do that. So guys, uh, I love that uh, Sean here did a very nice graphic. Let's explain HTTP2 over clear text. So HTTP2, guys, by default, if you don't know, is secure. We have to secure. And the reason is protocol ossification. Uh, the boxes in the middle, all these NAT boxes and routers in the middle, know that hey, if you're communicating over port 80, then you must be a port. Uh, you must be the HTTP protocol, and we know how the HTTP protocol looks like. It's HTTP 1.1. There's nothing else, right? They didn't, they didn't anticipate that it's going to be a breaking change like HTTP 2, right? So with HTTP 2, we changed the whole thing. We we introduced a completely new protocol, right? There are streams and stuff and magic all sorts of stuff so the boxes in the middle started blocking so i was like oh, what the heck is this this is not http so blah started blocking so browsers gave up and says you know what okay let's just secure http2 by default and that was great but for some reason there's this lingering thing that's called http2 over clear text which we still support for i don't know what reason right please tell me if you use this what is your use case? Because I have no idea why people are using this or are we still supporting this to begin with. There shouldn't be support, it should die. And because it's there, we gotta support all the baggage that comes with a new protocol, such as upgrading. And here's one flaw that we found. Here's a simple example. Let's say this is a reverse proxy that you guys are seeing. Okay, am I covering? I don't think I'm covering, okay. Yeah, so here's a reverse proxy, and there is this flag, slash flag is blocked. You're forbidden from accessing this from the client. You should only be accessing it through the backend, right? Slash flag. So you have a rule in the reverse proxy so that you cannot access that, okay? So if you make a get request on normal, on the root, that reverse proxy will just forward that to the backend, right? And then the backend will just respond back to you. This is HTTP 1.1, right? And then if you want to go to flag, that will be blocked by the reverse proxy. Okay, you're gonna get uh, forbidden. However, here's how HTTP2 smuggling works. And to, to understand how this works, you need to understand how layer four proxying works and how proxies most of the time does upgrading. And essentially the idea of tunneling, which I talked about many times on this channel. So just YouTube layer seven versus layer four, my video will show up and, and watch that to understand that. But what are we going to do here in this case is, okay, the client is going to do an HTTP upgrade. 
So it's just a, it's an HTTP 1.1 request, right? Telling the server to upgrade to H2C. So it will say, hey, upgrade to H2C. And says, okay, upgrade to H2C. And then when the reverse proxy receives that, it just merely forward that to the back end, which is the, di the discussion that we're having right now. It's forwarding it to the back end. The back end, if it supports H2C, it's going to say switching protocol. I got upgraded. The reverse proxy in this case, what it does is, okay, since you switched the protocol, all bets are off for me, right? I don't know what's the new protocol. So the easiest way for the reverse proxy to do is to switch you to a tunnel. Okay, essentially to a layer four proxy. You, so we switch from a layer seven proxy to a layer four proxy. Layer seven proxy looks at the content. Layer four does not. It's just merely forward the packets to the backend. So now all of a sudden you have a tunnel. What does that mean? All packets will be forwarded as is without looking. So that means all the rules that you have in the reverse proxy, gone. You can't apply any of them. So any request that you send, you can make a request to the Git slash it should be two you're going to get the response back directly from the back end right and if you go to get slash flag yeah to me to the reverse proxy now we're in tunnel mode we're in layer four proxying mode so i take the packet and just send it back to the back end right the back end will say okay oh you want to go to slash flag it's it's an open endpoint to me right because we put the rules usually in the reverse proxy in the load balancer we don't put the rules at the in the back end right because in the back end, you can access it directly if it's an internal network, right? Slash admin endpoints. Nobody blocks that because you need access to admin lock uh, endpoint. Like think of Envoy, for example, proxy. There is, or Caddy for that matter. There is endpoints that manages the proxy itself or, or the server itself. You can just like pretty much shut down the whole thing from that endpoint. These should not be exposed to the public. But in this case, if you know the path, you can essentially access it, which is extremely dangerous stuff. Okay. So now that's why in tunnel mode, everything is dangerous. And that's what is called HTTP2 smuggling. That's been, uh, we know this attack. We talked about it back in September 2020. Okay. That's the summary of the attack. But now, and then Jake back then says, you know what? I know this is an attack, but this is a proven concept. We're really not sure that the clouds are, are, are effective by this moment because we know that the it's an easy block at the reverse proxy. Like, yeah, well, just like they're going to check, hey, if someone is trying to upgrade to, to H2C, we're just going to block that. But Sean here says, you know what? I'm not ready to give up. He found, and you can write, read the article for yourself. He found many he found many ways to kind of do non-compliant http2 upgrade to trick the load balancer uh to just say oh, you know what oh that doesn't look like h2c it's just a normal upgrade i, I better forward it so he played with those upgrade settings and http2 say so at the end of the day he managed to get the uh cloudflare to bypass the h2c upgrade so he snuck in the upgrade to the backend and he managed to access the HTTP2 backend. So he managed to access all the rules on the backend. <laughs> he, he managed to skip all the rules and access the endpoints on the backend. And uh, uh, Azure, he managed to do the same thing with Azure. With each one, he, he there's a lot of work doing, going, going here to essentially, to essentially achieve that. He had to rewrite the HTTP library in Go, or, or at least modify to, to manage to do these low-level changes. Because Go, uh, he, he wrote all these scripts in Go, right? And yeah, it's just fascinating. Here, look at that. Yeah, yeah, okay, you, you get a smuggled response. He managed to smuggle the flag response from the back end. And obviously he tested on his own data, right? I, I'm assuming he just spun up a Cloudflare instance, he spun up a Google Cloud instance, and started testing all that stuff. Look at that, yeah. The server and his examples are always like slash flag. If I can access a slash flag, which is blocked from the reverse proxy, then I have succeed. <laughs> That's his test, essentially. And boy, you managed to do it. You managed to do it. Let's read this uh, blurb at the end of the day, the takeaway on this security session at the end of this video. Quote, finding vulnerability in major cloud providers in, is both a lucky and methodical 
methodical process. Although Jake, uh, the author of the original article, and, and the, essentially the, the person who found this bug, mentioned that cloud providers such as AWS could not be vulnerable to HTC H2C smuggling in his testing, a further application of his research yielded fruitful res results, which is his, uh, Sean's results in this case. In this process, I realized that even the best security researchers make assumptions about their research or may not have the time needed to find all affected parties, which is true, right? I mean, when you find something, you can only go so far, right? Because you have other stuff to look at, unless you dedicate a lot of time and effort, right? Uh, into finding something. And I'm, this goes for every engineer, really. If you think that you understand something, think again, because you're always going to find a hole in your understanding and your thinking. And you're going to find ways to break your knowledge and understanding. And, and just by thinking more about it, you will advance yourself. You will learn more. You'll become more coherent and you can speak about it more like as dr jordan peterson said like if you if you want to talk about a concept or something effectively you have to know way more than you're talking about right if you know a lot about what you're going to talk about and then you're going to discuss part of it that's where you make you you, you become an effective speaker essentially an effective communicator in general so, Sean continued, Consequently, even when research is made public, there are often plenty of opportunities to extend and further the research. 100% agree. Good job, Sean. Good job, uh, Jake, for this uh, amazing find, really. And uh, guys, we really need to kill this thing because we think that it's, yeah, let's just add a rule. That's what I thought back in September. So hey guys, just guys, everybody who have I, I told people, hey, if you have Nginx, if you have JProxy, if you have Envoy, just add this uh, extra rule to block any attempt to upgrade HTTP two so, uh, C so that it doesn't go to the backend, and that's what we thought. But no, there might be other ways, right? non-compliant ways to go through the, these checks and then sneak uh, snuck in right nasty stuff man nasty stuff so man a lot of people are calling for the death of H t 2c we need to kill this thing man we should not be using it it's just absolutely useless right because in the back end you can always secure your stuff with with certificate you can use let's encrypt or use your own certificate authority on your own network and you be you'll be secure and then your clients should trust the ca and just like that you have security you have encryption by default right in a cloud pro environment that is given you have to because you don't know what's happening in the cloud all sort of nasty things are there yikesy all right guys that's it for me today i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye